Hello and welcome. My name is Corey Heise and I'm in Group Bueno in the Case Study Additive Manufacturing class in the Eggendorf Institute of Technology. In this video, we are going to go over the basic principles of an involute spur gear. We talk about what undercutting is and how to deal with it. Next, we will touch on what interference between gears and how to avoid it. Finally, we go over how to design the appropriate undercut for a specific application. Spur gears have been used since ancient times. The, this figure um, shows an illustration of the two-man drive system that Leonardo da Vinci designed to power his vision of a helicopter-like device. The device uh, never flew, but the gear system works. Today we're going to talk about a complex phenomenon in spur gears that does not only take place when certain conditions are not met, but also we design we designers do it on purpose in order to keep the smooth path between mating gears. And that is called undercut. What is a gear? A gear is a cylinder or a disc with a no longer smooth surface, but with teeth projecting radially. Spur gears or straight cut gears are the simplest type of gear. And by simple, it does not mean easy. These gears mesh together correctly when they are the same module. Spear gears are excellent at moderating speeds, but tend to be noisy at high speeds. In this part, we will show some basic yet important terminologies that will help us understand what actually goes on between two gears that are in mesh together. First, we have the center of the gear, which is the axis of rotation. Then there is the addendum, the addendum circle or root circle which coincides with the bottom of the teeth of the gear. Then we have the base circle, which is used to derive the involute curve of the tooth. The pitch circle has the radius of where the meshing between another gear happens. And finally, the addendum circle has the radius of the outer edge of the tips of the teeth. What is undercut? The undercut of gears is also called deeper cutting and indicates the phenomenon of cutting the root of the gear deeper than the involute tooth curve. This can happen when there is interference between tooth cutting tool and the gear or between two meshing gears. Gear tooth consists of two curves, involute curve, the curve drawn from the base circle to the addendum circle, tricoid curve, the path of motion of rack cutter forming the area under the involute curve all the way to the root curve. What is interference? It is the unwanted phenomenon that takes place between two meshing gears when the top area of the tooth of the first gear comes in contact with any of the undesired areas of the second gear. The undesired areas of a gear that should not come in contact are tooth tip, tooth bottom under base circle and material of root circle. What are desired and undesired areas? A desired area of for two gears to mesh on involute gear is only the area of the involute curve which is above the base circle. An undesired area will all be the other areas of, of such, such as a tooth tip, tooth root, and material of root circle. Now I will leave you with some examples of desired and undesired areas animated on our designed gear. How to avoid interference. We will imagine two gears apart from each other on these origin points. These two gears have those basic annotation of base circle, pitch circle, and addendum circle. A tangent line drawn on the intersection point between two pitch circles at pitch point is called common tangent. Another line is drawn tangent to the two base circles is called common normal and the angle between common tangent and common normal is the pressure angle. The point of intersection between addendum circle of gear 1 and common normal is the point of engagement. On the other side of the point of intersection of the addendum circle of gear 2 and common normal is the point of recess. 
If the addendum circle size increases, the points will shift outwards towards the involute endpoints on the base circle. Now we will see that the gear tooth point started at the initial addendum circle size and is now moving down towards the base circle. If the addendum circle size increases more, the desired area will engage and that will cause interference. How to design the undercut. We will imagine a rack cutter that is used to cut material in order to form a gear. The rack cutter scrolls on the gear without slipping to form a trichoid curve. Here you can notice the top left point of the trapezium tooth form the trichoid curve. The design of, gear of the gear tooth consists of two parts divided among the base circle. These two parts are involute curve and trichoid curve. The problem that faces designers is how to calculate and find the intersection between two curves to draw one continuous line forming the gear tooth. How to design undercut. Now we will take a general point, Q, that lies on the trapezium. The current position of Q can be expressed as follows. Now let's rotate the gear anti-clockwise by an angle T, which then pushes the trapezium up by a distance R of T. The current position of Q can be expressed as follows. Since we are interested in the motion of Q relative to the gear, Therefore, we need to rotate the entire system about the origin by angle T clockwise. To get the position of point Q, we need to multiply the previous position by a clockwise rotation matrix as follows. By substituting the following, we get to set Q to the upper left point on the trapezium, which draws the trichoid curve. Now you can see an animation made from our code using ISSL. First we went over the basic terminology of an involute gear. Then we talked about the undercut and how to deal with it. Next we discussed interference and how to avoid it. And finally we designed an undercut for a certain application. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time and bye for now.